What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name's Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're going to be looking at the Glenmorangie Alta. Stick around. Now I kind of have a soft spot for Glenmorangie. It's one of the whiskeys that I got pretty excited about kind of early on in my whiskey journey. Um, I remember I used to buy a lot of the 10 year old back in the day. I really liked it. I thought it was delicious. I thought it was affordable. And that's still true now. I think it's a great value buy. And I think it's one of the stronger offerings from affordable Glenmorangies. Um, it really represents the house style. The house style, if you don't know, is it's got elements of cream and marmalade. It's very smooth. It's very rounded. And that's a result of having some of the tallest pot stills in Scotland. Now, the one we're looking at today is called the Ulta. Now, this is one of their private editions. It's actually their latest private edition from 2019. I think they stopped producing them in 2020. I think it was a 10 year run, but I could be wrong about that. We might be seeing more in the future. Um, but I've had a few of these private editions over the years. I missed out on a couple. I remember I wanted to try Campenta, Elanta. There were a couple in there I didn't get a chance to try that looked kind of promising. But I did try quite a few. I had Sinalta PX and Bacalta, a few more in there. Uh, I really enjoyed some of them. For the most part, I think they're really high quality whiskeys. They're not consistent. Their private editions aren't always good, but when they are good, they're really good. And the idea behind this one is that it's made using yeast found on the Glenmorangie estate. And I mean found, as in this was not previously known to science, this strain of yeast. Apparently it was discovered by Dr. Bill Lumsden, who is their master distiller. And he wanted to explore the effects of yeast on whiskey because it's not something that's very widely talked about or discussed. We'll talk about casks, we'll talk about distillate, we'll talk about peat, this, that, and the other thing, but not so much about yeast. So he wanted to explore that a little bit, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. So this was matured entirely in first and second fill bourbon barrels, and it comes in at an ABV of 51.2%. Uh, and I'll admit, as much as the yeast experimental side of this was interesting to me, I got pretty excited when I saw that ABV. Now, I'd never had uh, a high ABV Glenmorangie before I tried this one. They have put them out there before. I think we had in 2017, we had the Astar. That one had a higher ABV as well, but I never got a chance to try it out. So when I saw the ABV on this one, I thought, oh, it's gonna be a bigger, richer, bolder version of the classic Glen House style. And that interested me a lot. So yeah, with that said, why don't you kindly leave a like down below and we'll jump into our review and see what this one's all about. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a healthy ABV of 51.2%. Uh, beyond that, it's non-chill filtered, and according to Whiskey Base, it's also not colored. So all good. Now the color of our whiskey is gonna be kind of like this old gold color, you can see it there. Uh, beyond that, you have your classic Glenmorangie bottle. So uh, you have a white label here, kind of like these printed on imperfections. I do like that there's a mention of non-chill filtration right here, but they don't mention that it's not colored. That would be nice. Um, beyond that, I think it's got kind of like a bit of an understated classiness to the label. I do like the look of this, so I'm going to give it maybe four and a half out of five for presentation. I think it's one of Glenn Morangie's better designs. All right, let's try our nose. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Glenmo, big, strong Glenmo house style coming through here. It's a little bit waxy. You have brown sugar, you have apple pie. There's some like hay and malt and cereal notes in there as well. Um, there's some honey, there's some vanilla. You do have a fruitiness in here, so like maybe some orchard fruits. And maybe just a touch of rose water, something slightly perfumey in there as well. This is a really big nose, but it's also very gentle. There's not a sharp edge to be found in this. Now for the palate. Mm. Okay. Still very big, but very gentle. Uh, and you have a little bit of bitterness to kind of cancel out or work against that sweetness. Um, you have Chardonnay in here, fresh apples, some green mango as well still on a bit of brown sugar, and you have some really fat multi notes in here as well. Now for our finish. Mm. Mm. Okay. So things are settling in a little bit more in the finish. It gets a little bit more delicate. 
Uh, you have some more vanilla and honey coming in here. You also have those fruits, so apples, um, tangerines. There's some like lemon tart in here, a bit of cream, some almonds and some oak spice. This is long, it's easy, it's rich. So I'll tell you right now, I think this whiskey is really special. I think it's probably the most Glen Morangy, Glen Morangy I've ever had. Um, the ABV really turns up the volume on the flavors. It just gives you a bigger, bolder experience and it really is classic Glen Mo House style here. Uh, there's no wine finishes, there's no need for late stage tinkering. It's a very confident whiskey. And it's also very bright, it's very clean, and it's very rounded. Um, what I like is that it doesn't go too far in any kind of sweet direction. Glen Morangy sometimes does that, particularly with their wine finishes, but not here. You have this kind of natural, fruity tartness that keeps that sweetness in check. I really like that. Um, I don't know how old this is, but it's definitely old enough. There isn't a rough edge to it. It's a very rounded, very full whiskey. And it also has those really nice flavors, these fat, juicy, malty notes, brown sugar, these natural tart notes, the Chardonnay, lots of nice flavors in here as well. Um, I also find it very mouth coating. Uh, for something especially that's bourbon matured, this really sort of envelops your mouth, covers your whole mouth, gives you a very big experience. Um, for the yeast itself, I'm not too sure what effect the yeast has had on this whiskey. Um, I might taste a bit of yeastiness to it, but I'm not sure if that's just the power of suggestion. Um, for me, this is just a classic Glenmo profile that's been kind of amped up and rounded out. So obviously, I do like this one a lot. I think it's delicious. I'll give it a 90 in terms of score. Uh, I think it's one of the stronger private editions out there, and it's a little bit overlooked. It doesn't get quite the same fanfare as some of the other releases, and I'm not sure why. For me, it's a really strong one. It is worth noting that it's not a particularly sweet whiskey. It's not, you know, one of these cask finishes that Glen Morangy is famous for. For me, this is a much more honest representation of the house style, but again, just kind of cranked up a little bit and rounded out, which I think is really cool. Now for value, this is kind of a tough one because prices do vary on it. Uh, what I paid for it here in Taiwan is very different than what I see it going for on Master of Malt. I only paid about 75% of that price. So for me, I thought it was great value. I stocked up on a couple bottles. You might not want to do that, but I still think you should check it out at least once. Uh, not only is it delicious, it's also a private edition, and these things tend to go up in price over the years, the further you get from the release date. So if you do want to check it out, now is probably the right time. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Do me a solid and hit subscribe down below. Click that little bell icon and smash the like. Also, you know I want to hear from you. So have you tried the Alta? Have you tried some of the other private editions? How do they compare? And finally, in the comments down below, I want to hear from you. What would you like to see me review next? Put that down there and I'll be sure to keep it in mind for my next video. Bye, guys.